Yeah, hi everyone. Welcome to MyMax Academy. In this session, we will continue on the chapter Pell of Linear Equations in Two Variables for 10th Standard CBSC Max. We will continue with exercise 3.4, page number 57 in your textbook, exercise 3.4. We will have to continue with problem 2, fifth sub problem. Problem 2, fifth sub problem. I will read the question. The question is, a lending library has a fixed charge for first three days and an additional charge for each day thereafter. Sarita paid rupees 27 for a book she kept for seven days, while Suzy paid rupees 21 for the book she kept for sorry seven days and she kept for five days. Find the fixed charge and charge for each extra day. So, I will read the question again. A lending library has a fixed charge for the first three days and an additional charge for each day thereafter. Sarita paid rupees 27 for a book she kept for seven days, while Susie paid rupees 21 for the book she kept for five days. Find the fixed charge and the charges for each extra day. So, we need to find the fixed charge. So, library has a fixed charge. First three days, it is having a fixed charge. And after three days, for each day, there is a charge per day. Per day, you have to pay some money if you are holding that book or if you are taking that book from the library. So, it has two charges. One is fixed charges for first three days. And from the fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, it is per day charge. For each day, you have to pay some money to the library if you are holding that book. So, we will say let the fixed charge, we have to find the charges, let us say the fixed charge, let the fixed charge, fixed charge for the first three days, first three days be rupees x. So, first three days the charge is x rupees. Let the charge per day, charge per day after 3 days be rupees y. So, first for the first 3 days, there is a fixed charge. Suppose if we keep it for first 3 days, it is 5 rupees. Then after that, for every day, they may charge you 2 rupees per day, something like that. So, you have to find that fixed charge and charge per day. So, Sarita has kept the book for 7 days and she has paid rupees 27 for keeping book for 27 days. Sorry, for keeping a book for 7 days. Right? Sarita paid rupees 27 for a book she kept for 7 days. So, which means she has paid 27 rupees, she has kept the book for 7 days, which means for the first 3 days, she would have paid x rupees. For the first 3 days, she would have paid x rupees plus Fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, and seventh day for the remaining four days because she totally she took charge, she kept the book for seven days. So, initial three first three days she would have paid x rupees because it is x rupees for the first three days that is a fixed charge. Then, for each additional day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, and seventh day, for each day there is a per day charge which is y. So, she has kept it for four more days. This is four y. So, first three days is x rupees. And for the remaining 4 day, each day y rupee. So, 4 day means 4 y. So, this is for 3 days, this is for the, the remaining 4 days. So, totally 7 days and she has paid how much? 27 rupees. And Susie paid rupee 21 for the book she kept for 5 days. The another person, Susie, she has she had kept the book for 5 days, which means first 3 days she would have paid x rupees plus the remaining 2 days. She would have paid as per day charges, which means she would have paid 2y because one day it is y rupee. She, she kept it for two more days, which is for the fourth day and fifth day. First three days, x rupees. Fourth day and fifth day, two more days, it is y rupee per day. So she kept it for two days, which means 2y. Right? So that is given as 21. So this is the equation based on the given condition or based on the given situation. Fine. 
so now we should find whether the solution exists right that's what the the, the question 2 says right form the pair of linear equations in the following problems find their solution if they exist by elimination method so we need to check whether the solution exists or not so for that we have to check the the ratio you may refer your page number 46 table 3.4 right that table ratio we need to check so that we can say whether it has unique solution or infinitely many solution or no solution so for that we need to get this in the general form what is general form of general form of linear equation general form is this one a1x plus b1y plus c1 equal to 0 a2x plus b2y plus c2 equal to 0 we have to convert this this equation in this form first so that we can check the ratio which is there in your table 3.4 of your page number 46 in your textbook so let's let's try to rewrite this x plus 4y i will bring this 27 this side it will become minus 27 equal to 0 to, to, to make this equation in this form so which means in the right side you should have 0 which means we should bring everything to the left side so this one is x plus 2y this 21 comes this side it will become minus 21 equal to 0 fine now we have got the equation in this form now we should find what is a1 what is a1 a1 is the coefficient of x in the first equation this was the first equation this was the second equation now a1 is 1 because the coefficient of x before x nothing is there which means 1 is there b1 is b1 is this 4 comma c1 is minus 27 c1 is minus 27 minus 27 now what is a2 a2 is the coefficient of x in the second equation so a2 is also 1 the coefficient of x is 1 so b2 is 2 comma comma c2 is minus 21 right comparing this with this correspondingly i am checking what is a1 what is b1 what is c1 a2 b2 c2 right now we need to check the condition first is a1 by a2 let's check what is a1 by a2 1 by 1 which is equal to 1 now let's find what is b1 by b2 b1 is 4 b2 is 2 so b1 by b2 is if it cancel you'll get 2 so what we observe by a1 by a2 is 1 by b1 by b2 is 2 therefore a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 because it is 1 this is 2 they are not equal so therefore as per the table 3.4 in your textbook page number 46 table 3.4 this ratio is true then it has unique solution unique solution which means one solution which means solution exists it has unique solution now we should solve them using elimination method right so let's write the equation again to solve you have to go back to this form to check the ratio we'll bring it in this form by bringing everything to the left side so the right side has zero so that this matches with this we can find a1 a2 b1 b2 and then conclude whether the solution exists or not then here a solution is there and it has a unique solution then we will try to solve the equation using elimination method let's write the equation what are the equation we have to go back to this form don't go to this form you have to go back to this form x plus 4y equal to 27 then x plus 2y equal to 21 this first equation this second equation now to solve for the elimination method what we should check with that we should check whether the quotient of x or quotient of y are equal any one of them is equal so quotient of x in both the equation is it same this is one this is one yes it is same then we can continue to add or subtract these two equations so we should if they are not same then you have to make them same right which we had done it in the, the the previous problem we can refer to my previous video so the, the moment the quotient is same then we have to add or subtract now here this is also plus one this is also plus one both are plus x means what one x here also one x both are plus 1x. So, when the sign are same, then we need to subtract them, which means we should change the sign. Minus, this will become minus, this will become minus, because this is plus, plus, plus. You have to change it to minus. Now, x and x will get cancelled. This is plus x, this is minus x. This is 4, this is minus 2. You have to always change, see that change the sign. So, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2y equal to 27 minus 21 is 6. Now, what is my y? My y is equal to 6 by 2. 
which gives me 3. So I have got the value of y, which is the per day charge I have got. Per day charge is rupee 3 per day. Now what is the fixed charge? Which means x. We have to find x. We can take any one of the equation. So I will take the second equation. Substitute y equal to 3 in second equation. I am going to put y equal to 3 in this equation. What is my second equation? x plus 2y equal to 21. x plus 2, y is 3 equal to 21, 2 bracket 3 means 2 into 3, right. So, x plus 6 equal to 21. So, x is equal to 21 minus 6, x is equal to 15. So, which means the fixed charges for the first 3 days. Fixed charge for first 3 days equal to rupees 15, right. Then charge charge per day, charge charge per day, charge per day after after 3 days is equal to rupees 3, rupees 3 for every day that pay rupees 3. Clear? So, this is the, so you can check, suppose you can check whether it is satisfying the condition. See, Sarita has had kept the book for 7 days. So, which means first 3 days she would have paid 15 rupees. Then for the 4th day, 5th day, 6th day, 7th day, each day she has to pay 3, 3 rupees. Which means 4 days she has to pay each day 3 rupees. Which means 12 rupees. 12 rupees plus initial 3 days 15 rupees makes it 27. Again, so see, she has kept the book for 5 days. So, first three days she will have paid 15 rupees. This is not every day 15 rupees. For all the three days together she will pay 15 rupees. So, 15 rupees plus the fourth day and fifth day, the remaining two days she will pay per day 3 rupees. So, per day 3 rupees means for two days it is 6 rupees and already a fixed charge of 15. So, 15 plus 6 is 21. So, our answer is right. Clear? So, you can also substitute this, this is what we checked it. If you want, you can substitute here and check, you will get 27. If you substitute 15 and 3 here, you will get 21. That is for the verification. Clear? So, this completes our uh, elimination method. Now, we will move on to the next algebraic method for solving the linear equations in two variables, which is called as cross multiplication method. So, next method to go is cross multiplication method. Let me erase all this. Fine. So, next one is cross multiplication method. Cross multiplication method for solving the linear equations in two variables. See, for the cross multiplication method, the very important of the first step is the given linear equations in two variables, the given two equations should be in the general form. What is the general form? General form of linear equation in in two variables. What is the general form of linear equations in two variables? It is this one a1x plus b1y plus c1 equal to 0, a2x plus b2y plus c2 equal to 0. So, whatever is the equation that is given, you have to convert them in this form. That is the first step for cross multiplication method. This is very important. If we do not keep it in this form, then we will not get the right answer. So, always whatever the equation is given, we have to always get it in this form, which means the right side should be always 0. This is for solving. We will do the same thing also when we are trying to find the ratio to check whether unique solution, no solution or infinitely many solution, which is our table 3.4 in page number 46. For that also, we have to have the equation in this form. And for solving, we will keep it in this form and we will try to solve. We will keep the number of the right side, we will try to solve that. That is for substitution and elimination method. But for cross multiplication method, for solving the problem using cross multiplication method, the given two equations in linear, uh, the two equation, linear equations and two variables, the given equation should be in this form, which means right side should be 0. Then we can solve. Then only we should solve using we can solve using cross multiplication method, we will give the right answer. If not, 
if it is not in this form then we will not get the right answer now once it is in this form i will write one thing so we will write rewrite this in the then we will for solving this for cross multiplication this is the method you will put x you will put y then here you will write one right we can refer page number uh, 58 in your textbook oh, no, not 58 um, yeah sorry page number 60 you can refer page number 60 60 in your textbook where this this whatever i'm going to write here is given there so you will have x y 1 then you will put you will start with b1 b2 then c1 c2 a1 a2 b1 b2 right so this you need to put then you will do this into this 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 and this multiplied by this we have to do this into this then minus we have to do this into this then you have to do this into this minus this into this then this into this minus this into this i will do a problem so that you can you can understand what i am trying to say here it may be a little confusing whatever i just said till now we'll do a problem then you will be very clear what i am trying to tell here so let's take one problem let's go to example 14 in page number 60 so page number 60 page number 60 in your textbook example 14 example 14 one four in page number 60 in your textbook 60 page number 6060 so it says the question example 14 i'm reading from a bus stand in bangalore if you buy two tickets to malleshwaram and three tickets to Yashwantpur, the total cost is rupees 46. But if you buy three tickets to Malleshwaram and five tickets to Yashwantpur, the cost is 74 rupees. Find the fares from the bus stand to Malleshwaram and to Yashwantpur. So that is the question. So which means from Bangalore, if we need to go to Malleshwaram, there is some charge. And if you from Bangalore, if you go to Yashwantpur, there is some charge. We need to find those charges. What is the ticket fare? Right? So we will say here, we will say let the cost of one ticket, cost of one ticket from Bangalore, the bus stand which is in Bangalore. Right? Now it is called as Bengaluru. Right? Now Bangalore is called as Bengaluru. Right? So Bangalore. To which Malleshwaram? Malleshwaram. At the cost of one ticket from Bangalore to Malleshwaram is rupees X. So we will say let the cost of one ticket, which means one bus ticket, one ticket from Bangalore. Bangalore to Yashwantpur. Bangalore to the place in Yashwantpur. Yeah, Yashwantpur. Yes. Rupees Y. Right. Now, what is the condition given? What is statement given? If we buy two tickets to Malleshwaram and three tickets to Ashwanpur, the cost is 46, which means three tickets to Malleshwaram, sorry, two tickets to Malleshwaram. So, cost of one ticket is x rupees, and we are buying two tickets to Malleshwaram means the cost is 2x plus to Ashwanpur. If you buy three tickets, cost of one ticket to Ashwanpur is y, so three tickets means 3y, it adds up to rupees 40. 6 the cost is 46 the fare total fare is. so if you buy two tickets to malleshwaram and three tickets to eshwanpur then the total cost is rupees 46 that is what is given in the question now second is if you buy three tickets to malleshwaram then what is the cost of three tickets 3y three right if you buy three tickets to malleshwaram 3x sorry 3x and five tickets to eshwanpur which means 5y 
the, the cost becomes 74 rupees. If you buy three tickets to Maleshwaram and five tickets to Eshwanpur from the same the bus stand in Bangalore. From bus stand in Bangalore, we are going to Maleshwaram or if you go to Eshwanpur, this is the cost X and Y. So if you buy three tickets of for Maleshwaram from Bangalore, it is 3x is the cost. And if you buy five tickets to Eshwanpur from Bangalore, each ticket is Y rupee. So five five tickets will be 5y. So if you add that total cost will become 74. Now we need to find the fares. Fare or cost. <coughs> now we need to solve this using cross multiplication method. So we have got the equation. This is equation 1 and equation 2. Now before we solve this using cross multiplication method, you can also check whether the solution exists by trying to do a1 by a2, b1 by b2 and all that and check whether the solution exists or not. Then you can proceed. That is also one way you can make sure that the solution exists and do. you can always do whether it has unique solution or not and then proceed. That is fine. Right. Now here, here, I, here it is actually the unique solution exists. Uh, you can also check using that ratio a1, b1, a1 by a2, b1 by b2 and all that. So now we will try to solve using cross multiplication method. So I told you whenever you want to solve this using cross multiplication method, we need to convert this in this form. We have to convert the given set of equation in this form. But for other methods, earlier methods that we had, those were graphical method, substitution method or elimination method, we can keep it like this and try to solve like this. But for cross multiplication method, we need to convert it into this form, the general form, these two equations, which means we have to bring everything to the left side and the right side after equal to I should have only zeros. So what do we do? We will we'll bring everything to the left side. So the equation 1 becomes 2x plus 3y minus 46 equal to 0, 3x plus 5y minus 74 equal to 0. Okay. Right. So if I bring everything to the, I am bringing this 46 to this side, it will become minus 46. I am bringing 74 to this side, it will become minus 74. So this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Right. Now, now it is in this form. The given set of equation is in this form. Right. In the general form of linear equations in two variables. So now we have converted the given equation in this form, which is this. Now let's find what is a1, a2, b1, b2, and all that. So a1 is the coefficient of x in the first equation, which is 2, and my b1 is the coefficient of y in the first equation, which is 3. This is 3, and my c1 is minus 46. Now a2 is coefficient of x in the second equation. If you compare this, this is a2, right? Hope I am not hiding. The a2 is 3, my b2 is 5, and my c2 is minus 7. Oh, sorry, it's minus 74. Clear? So we have got a1, a2, b1, b2, c1, c2. Now let's write this. Now you will understand what what it what it means. What, what this means. So, this is the, this you will follow for all the problems that you need to solve using cross multiplication method. We will put x, y and 1. Here the variable x and y are the variable that you will put. Here you will put always 1. Then you will write b1, b2, c1, c2, a1, a2, again b1, b2. Fine. So, let me erase this. Okay, I may have to erase this also. Fine, I am erasing this also. Okay, now, now let's substitute. So again, x, y, 1. Now we need to substitute the values of b1. b1 is what? 3 that we should substitute. So b1 is 3, b2 is 5, then c1. c1 is minus 46. Now C2 is minus 74, right? C1, C2, C1, C2, then A1. A1 is 2, A2, A2 is 3, then B1, B1 is 2, sorry, B1 is 3, B2 is 5, right? So here you are substituting the B1 from this. So B1, you are substituting here. B1 is 3, B2 is 5, instead of B2, you are substituting 5. Then instead of C1, you are substituting minus 46. C2, you are substituting minus 74 because C2 is minus 74. 
again a1 is 2 a2 is 3 again your b1 right i'm just putting one line so that you don't confused get confused so after this this step so b1 is 3 b2 is 5 now we have got this so this is the general uh, you can remember this as a formula or for format or formula then after this you have to write this then what we should do is we should say x divided by and put x divided by after this next step is x divided by this into this you have to 3 into minus 74 so 3 into minus 74 then you have to always put minus always you have to put minus this into this so this into this minus this into this this into this minus this into this that's what i was telling you this into this minus this into this so which means this into this always this this into this minus this into this so 5 into minus 46 then we should say equal to y by equal to y by now we are we have gone here this into this minus this into this you have to do that so this into this which means minus 46 into 3 this into this minus this into this this is minus 74 right minus 74 so minus 74 and put that in the bracket into 2 so this into this minus 46 into 3 minus this into this so always you should do this into this then you have to put a minus and do this into this then equal to 1 by this one you have to put 1 by again you do this into this this into this minus this into this so 2 into 5 2 into 5 minus 3 into 3 3 into 3 clear everyone right so i will repeat again so after writing this you will substitute the values then you will say x divided by this into this 3 into minus 74 minus this into this this is 5 into minus 46 equal to this y by again minus 46 into 3 this into this minus minus 74 into 2 you have to be careful so you get, get 2 minus here this, this is as for the process we will put the minus or as per the formula so this into this minus this into this equal to again 1 by this into this 2 into 5 minus 3 into 3 clear now we will simplify next so um, hope you could now understand what i was trying to tell here right right you will write it in this form then you will do this into this i am not putting it here right so this into this minus this into this again this into this minus this into this and again this into this minus this into this now we will try to multiply and simplify right so we get x by right here or right here i'll erase this so always we should get it in the general form and then write a1 a2 so which means we should bring everything to one side for cross multiplication method that is very important fine now now we have x by I'm writing this step now 3 into 74 what is 3 into minus 74 i get sine is minus so 3 4s are 12 carry 1 7 3s are 21 22 right then minus 5 into minus 5 into minus 46 will become plus 230 right 5 into 30 323 right equal to y by multiply this minus 46 into 3 what is minus 46 into 3 18 carry 1 12 13 and it is minus then minus into minus plus 74 into 2 plus 74 into 2 is 148 equal to 1 by 2 times 5 2 times 5 is 10 minus 3 times 3 is 9 so everyone clear right so now so i multiplied this two then minus these two i have written here then this into this then here minus and minus plus 2 into 74 or 74 into 2 then 2 into 5 minus 3 into 3 now what do we have now uh, we have x by what is 222 minus minus 22 plus 230 is 8 equal to y by 138 this is 10 equal to this is 1 by 10 minus 9 is 
वन बाई वन फाइन तो वी गॉट दिस नाउ यू टेक वी नीड फाइंड एक्स एंड सो यू टेक दीज टू यू टेक दिस एंड दिस राइट एंड देन राइट हियर एक्स बाय एट इक्वल टू वन बाय वन देन सॉल्व फॉर एक्स सो वन इनटू एक्स इज एक्स इक्वल टू एट इनटू वन इज एट सो एक्स इज एट देन टेक दीज टू y by 10 equal to 1 by 1. Again, cross 1 into y is y equal to 10 into 1 is 10. So you have x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 10. So the fare, the cost of the fare, or fare from Bangalore to Malleswaram is rupees 8, right? Ticket fare, one ticket fare, one ticket fare, or cost of one ticket, rupees eight, and one ticket fare from Bangalore to Yashwantpur, Yashwantpur is rupees ten. That is the answer. Clear? how to solve using cross multiplication method right fine so this is how we this is one more method for solving the linear equations in two variables so what are the four methods that we have seen first one that we have that we have uh, first one that we saw was graphical method then we did substitution method then we did elimination method now we are doing cross multiplication method there are four ways to Solve the linear equations in two variables. In that, the first method, right? The first method, which is called as graphical method. The other three methods, right? The other three methods are called as algebraic methods, right? They are substitution method, elimination method, and cross multiplication method. So these three are called as algebraic methods for solving the linear equations in two variables. And the first method that we saw by drawing the graph, that is called as graphical method. For solving the linear equations in two variables, hope you guys have understood this cross multiplication method. I will continue in my next video. You can watch my next video for the continuation of this chapter as well as continuation of the cross multiplication method. We'll do the problems in that. And uh, if you have any doubts, you can WhatsApp me, and I will clarify your doubts. So thanks for watching. You can we can meet in the next video. Thank you guys.